Hey guys, it is Pam with 44 Marketplace and we are here for day three of five in our Back to Basics series that we're working on. This is our piece of furniture that we're working on tonight. We're going to give everybody a minute to kind of get caught up. And while we're getting caught up, getting everybody on here, I'm going to remind you what we've done so far. Right now, our little piece that is here, we cleaned it good with our white lightning cleaner, which I had somewhere, oh, there it is. All right, so we cleaned it the first night with our white lightning cleaner. Um, it cleans and deglosses it. Then, after we cleaned it and wiped it off, we put our paint on there. So that was the first night we painted. Last night, we added our accent colors, and I want you guys to see what our accent colors look like. Um, we added a custom mix of vintage duck egg along with Savannah Mist. We also put our new farmhouse green, and we have our um, driftwood on there, besides the drop cloth and sandbar that we started with as our base coat. While I'm waiting for everybody to get on. Um, I do want to say thank you to everybody who's tuned in and watched our little video series. And thank you for buying from the local Dixie Bell retailers. We are all small businesses. And when you buy from us, you support a dream. So that is very important to us as retailers. So thank you very much. And keep in mind when you buy from a local retailer, you're paying for clarinet lessons or karate lessons or college or in my case, dog food. So um, I tried to cut the autofocus off, but it keeps cutting itself back on. So sorry about that. It is what it is. Um, tonight, we're gonna get started with distressing. A lot of people have questions about distressing. There's not a certain amount of distressing that you have to do, that you need to do. It's totally up to you. But there are several ways to distress, and they all have pros and cons. So tonight we're going to wet distress, we're gonna dry distress, and we're gonna chemically distress this piece. That way you guys can see how each one behaves, and we can go from there. Um, I'm gonna tell it to focus on this piece of furniture, so maybe it'll quit doing that. All right, um, so when you wet distress, if you wait too long after your paint's been on there, it doesn't distress as well um, because the paint's just too dry and it doesn't distress as well. But the pro is you don't eat into the wood of your piece of furniture or whatever you're distressing. Dry distressing, you can distress at any point in time that you want to, but sometimes it eats into the wood of your piece and it can actually bring forward to the raw wood. It'll eat right through your original finish, your paint, everything, and re eat into your raw wood. So that is a pro and a con. And then when you chemically distress, a lot of people love to use the chemical distressing for the runs and the splatters and everything that are great with some of the finishes that are going on now. But that being said, um, I'm not one that likes the runs and stuff. I'm more a traditional finish, but um, you can also use it just for general distressing and it never eats into your wood. So we're gonna go ahead and get started and we are going to start with, like I told you, when I distress, I like to distress pieces um, that would naturally distress. And if you've got a sharp edge like you do here, it would, odds are it would get rubbed on, it would naturally distress. So what we're gonna start with is we're gonna start with one of my favorite ways to distress. Everybody probably has these in your kitchen. I get my Mr. Bottle, I dampen it a little bit. And I'm gonna tell you, when you first start distressing, do not start distressing with the green side. If you start distressing with the green side, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, it eats through your paint so, so quickly. All right, so we're gonna start with our yellow side, which is just a sponge, and we're going to wet distress part of this. If it doesn't distress enough or it's taking too much effort on your part, start with the green side, but start easy because I'm telling you, this green side, oh my gee, it will eat right through it very, very, very quickly. Okay, so we're gonna wet distress on this edge. All right. I don't wanna take too much of my green off. And I want 
up just a little bit. Can you see where my little bit of brown is peeking through? That's kind of what I'm going for. And like I say, if you want to quicken the pace, and since we're doing this how-to video and we're not going to be at it all night, I'm going to show you how we're going to quicken the pace. We can do it. Now, some people will even spray their furniture with their mister bottle to get it wet, but sometimes that does cause a blending effect, so keep that in mind. So, you can spray your sponge, you can spray your piece, whichever you'd rather. And like I say, I'm just trying to get just a little bit. You do not want your distressing to be even. Things don't distress evenly, so you don't want to be. Now, if you want to distress this or use your sponge to blend it or whatever, you're welcome to do that, but I really like the way my piece looks, so I'm not going to use it on the face of my piece. I do like to do the uh, top edges of the drawer. I'm going to raise you guys up. I don't want to make you sick, but this beautiful architecture around the drawer, we do want to distress that some, and you just kind of want to willy-nilly distress it. Hey guys, let me know you're here, and if you've got a project you're working on, I'd love to hear about it. And have you checked out your local Dixie Bell paint retailer? I keep saying Dixie Bell, but I mean Dixie Bell paint, because I just found out last week that Dixie Bell is actually a porn website. I had no idea. How funny is that? Somebody told me that. Maybe Sandy can check it out for me. I see you're here, Sandy. Y'all are awfully quiet tonight. Nobody's saying anything or my comments not showing up. All right, so now this is wet distressing. We're using this to wet distress. Um, and it just, a lot of times you may want to distress around where your drawers are, um, where your handles go, different things like that. But that is wet distressing. And you see, we're pulling some of the paint off. Okay? All right. So, that is one way to distress. You can also distress this regular way, um, sanding sponges. These are my favorite. Some people like to use flexible sandpaper, which is awesome, but it's also expensive. Um, and you can see, just that quick, that eats right through there. Watch how quickly it eats right through here. See, you've already got brown coming through. But now, these sanding sponges, one side is more aggressive than the other. So, that's what you got to keep in mind. So, if you're actually dry distressing, it eats through quite quickly. See how quickly we've got brown showing right there? I don't know if you guys can see in the video, but we get a lot of brown quickly. So, we've got that. And like I say, if you want to distress in the panel, that is perfectly fine. Now, the other way that we distress is... I want a little bit more of this right here. Hang on just a second. Was it as hot for everybody today as it was here? Lord have mercy. It was super, super hot. Okay, now the other thing to keep in mind is this drawer, I don't know if you can tell in the video, has a little nice little edge around it. A lot of times I like to distress that a little bit too because I'm probably going to go back and highlight this with wax and now tomorrow night is waxing and glazing. And then Friday night, we're going to talk about the finishing touches for it. If you use wax on your piece, like we're planning to use tomorrow night, then that part cannot be top coated until the wax has time to properly dry, which is about 48 to 72 hours. But everything that we glaze, we can go ahead and put our clear coat, our top coat on there, and we're going to do it so that you guys know what the proper way to do it. All right, so we're dry distressing this. All right, now... Something that is fabulous for chemically distressing. You guys are going to laugh when you see it. Do you guys ever shop at the Dollar Tree? Have you ever tried Awesome Cleaner? It is amazing for chemically distressing. I just take a little cloth and um, spray it on there. And it just eats right through your paint. See how quickly you get some brown right there? Now, it also works to break down your paint if you spray it directly on your paint. So, even though I don't normally do that, we are going to do that here. But, don't be upset if I end up painting back over it. It will actually break down your paint that you've got on there. Did you see how it did? Right there? It gives you that look that everybody's going for. 
If you guys are commenting, I'm sorry. For some reason, my comments are not showing up. I have no idea what's going on tonight. All right. So see how quickly that is? Look at that. It really eats through there. Oh, there come comments all of a sudden. It eats right through the paint. So if you're wanting to do this, Awesome works great. Now, a lot of times, I also use vinegar and water. I do about half and half. Um, and your piece will smell like vinegar until it dries, but I promise you, once it dries, you won't even know it's there. It is amazing. But when you're distressing, keep in mind, because this has raised panels, can you see where we're making the brown show on those raised panels? We're going to go back in tomorrow night, and we're going to um, use a little bit of glaze and some wax so that we can highlight these panels so that everything has this nice patina looking um, we may, if we have time, we may even stick some rust on here tomorrow night because I love me some patina. So we're doing some distressing. Can you guys see how that goes right through that paint where I sprayed it on there? See, we've got the brown. Okay, so um, we can do it with this. We can do it with our awesome cleaner. And while you're doing this, if you take too much off, don't stress about it. Because if you take too much paint off, just take your little chip brushes. Remember, we used the chip brushes last night. Take your chip brushes and dry brush your paint back on there, okay? All right. Um, somebody wanted me to go over these brushes again. This is the brush from Chalk Pro. I know you guys love the accent, but y'all just know I'm from the South, and that's how it sounds. These are from Chalk Pro, and they are the bomb diggity. Um, they also have these two sizes in their plush line as well. So there you go. And somebody wanted to see the paint pixie brush again so that you can see the way it's shaped. It's called a French round. This is what it is. Paint pixie. It's backwards. Sorry. Um, so the paint pixie and the mister bottle. There is the mister bottle. Can you see that mine has paint all over it? Because it's loved a lot. Okay. So... We are distressing, distressing, distressing. And when I distress mine, I really, um, because of the colors that I've put on this piece, I can tell you it's probably going to get a lot of distressing. Uh, and if you'll notice, typically I don't paint hinges, but I did paint the hinges on this one because when I got the piece, there was already paint on the hinges. And the only way to rectify that is to go back in, take them all off, boil them with some um, either baking soda or put them in some ketchup overnight to get it off. And there you go. And if you guys didn't know, ketchup is perfect for cleaning hinges and hardware. It is ideal for that. Okay, so we've got some of our distressing done. And if you guys see anything that you like on here, you guys have a lot of uh, local Dixie Bell retailers. There's over a thousand of us. So surely there's one near you. If there isn't, I sell online and ship all over. I shipped out five packages today. So find your nearest Dixie Bell retailer. If you don't have one, then I'll be your Dixie Bell retailer. But either way, we are going to create this piece together. There's a lot of Dixie Bell retailers watching on here. So if you'll put where you're from, maybe they can tell you if they're near you. And they would love to help you with what you got going on. I didn't see anybody put up any projects they're working on. Y'all are different than me. Shoot, I got six or eight projects going on any given moment in time. Now, while we're doing this, can you guys see the... My bruised up legs, don't look at that. Can you guys see the, the detailing at the bottom of this? Well, this, you're going to want to glaze or wax, but you also want a little bit of something. Come on. Well, I have no idea why it's wanting to lose focus again. I cut the autofocus off. So what you're going to want to do is you are going to want to do something to highlight this. You may want to distress it a little bit like I'm doing tonight, but you may also want to highlight it with wax or with glaze or something. Tomorrow, we are going to use grunge glaze. We're going to use some gilding wax. We're also going to use some regular grunge gray wax. We may even do black. I don't know. Um, since this is a display piece, we can do whatever we want to do. So you guys let me know which products you want to try, and we'll just throw them on there because it's too much fun. 
Okay, so, do y'all think this is enough distressing or does it need more distressing? It'll probably get more distressing. Y'all are kind of quiet tonight. Usually y'all got a lot to say, especially Sandy. She's not even talking tonight. But we gotta have some distressing on this piece. Sometimes older pieces, like I told you, if you heavily distress them, then um, they're easier, it's easier to hide their bumps and bruises. So I'm not gonna bore you guys to death tonight. I am going to continue to distress this piece. And if you guys have questions, please just send me a private message. Um, I will be online for the next few hours. I've got some book work to do and stuff like that. And if there's something I can help you with, please let me know. And again, this is Pam with 44 Marketplace. Thanks for watching. Have a great night.